on. So guys, this is part one of the build here of our computer unboxing. If you haven't seen the overview, check that out. So we're going to build a computer here. We already mounted our power supply here. Real simple, you lay it down, match up your screw holes in the back side of your case, put your four or five screws in depending on how many it is. Really simple and all the power is tied up here for now. We're going to leave that tied up. So we've been looking over the case. We have uh, three 240 millimeter fans, one on the top, one in the front, one on this side door. They're all blue LED and then we have a 140 in the rear. Also, you have a capability on the bottom of the case for another 120 or 140 fan with a dust filter. And you also have capability for another 230 fan on this back side, the far side of the case. And as you can see here, this, it's a cool master. These are your slots for your hard drives or your disk drives. And they're snap slide. So much better than the case I've ever used, which are all screws. And then even here, when you're putting out your back rear for your... Uh, PCI slots, your uh, graphics cards, your video cards, or whatever you are, your audio cards. These are little like plastic clips too. You just snap them in and out, which is really nice. You don't have to break them. Old cases, you had to like break them out. So you know, this is a lot nicer. So we're gonna mount the motherboard here, and as you can see, it's really hard to tell what it says here. But there's ATX and micro ATX. It tells you the slot numbers. They've already got two of these gold lifters screwed in. So you screw in your little gold pieces. And then you lay your motherboard on top of that and you match up the holes and then you screw your screws down in these little gold lifters. They keep your motherboard off the case itself. Um, and we've been looking around the case. You've got your little like stands here at the bottom. You can flick them out or keep them in. Keep your computer more level. The case itself looks like it's very good material. It will keep very cool. It's got a lot of air ventilation on the top and the bottom. And it seems like it has a lot of room, you know, we've, we've tucked all the cords underneath here from, you know, your HG audio, your front USB. Also has a front plug-in SATA, so you want to plug a SATA right to the front top of your computer. And also the knob is a fan control, you can turn your fan power on and off, and or up and down, and turn the lights on and off at any time you want, which is nice. So we have our motherboard here, we've got all our little pieces right on top. Your little cutout for the rear, as you see there's a lot of uh, USB power supports your standard audio jack supports, all in anti-static bags, got this here, your SLI, which we won't need, this is how you SLI, you, you put it right down both graphics cards, you got your multi-instruction guidebook, then we have the motherboard itself, the anti-static bag, and you guys don't know about building computers, your body can build off, uh, you know, basically electric, and you can shock your parts, so when you're working on a computer, you want to be very careful, and you want to make sure you de-shock de yourself, they have little bands you can get, some stuff comes with it, or you need to touch something metal. Either the case might work, or find something metal in your house so you don't shock your parts. It can ruin them, actually. So, take the motherboard out here. I got it. Now, I don't know, is there any screws in here with the motherboard? Sometimes these gold screw lifters come with the motherboard, or they come with the case. So, we need to check here. I don't see them, so check the case box to see if there's a. But yeah, they gave you a little sticker, Gigabyte, if you want to put it on a computer to show it off. And here's the motherboard itself. It's black and blue. Got your heat sinks, very nice. It says ultra durable, Gigabyte. There's your AM plus three slot. Here's where your RAM goes. You got your four slots of RAM here. You got your, where your pins goes. Here's your PCI slot, your PCI Express. You've got your hookups for your SATA over here on the side. It's got eight slots for the SATA. And then it has also GS or G SATA. I'm not sure what that is. Maybe I'm just dumb. But yeah, you, you got your hookups for your uh, HD, your USB panels for front, your HD audio in the front, uh, and then your rear. You've got your SATA ports. Well, it has rear SATA ports, which is nice. And it also has your USBs in the back too, and your audio. And it only has one Ethernet. Um, then on the rear here, you can see what it looks like. So they've got. Um, slots here. We're looking for the gold things, but yeah, basically, right. oops, Kyle just broke it off. <laughs> you basically lay it down here, and you're going to match up these slots, and they list them of where you need to, you know, where to put them. So this will, this will go like right in here, and this this will come out the back, this one's where you can plug in. Yeah, start taking these out of the package. Oh, you need uh, well, you need to see, it has these numbers listed, so we need to go A, B, C, D, so here's A. And we're going to throw these in here for you. I'm just going to give you another look at this if you didn't get a closer look. I like the little color scheme of this. It matches the case really nice. I didn't know exactly what color this. You know, sometimes I got a bunch of gold pieces on them. I like this 
darker steel look with the blue on it. Very clean cut. All these slots are black. The ones I have are like rainbow, green, and yellow, and dumb stuff like that. So I think this is a very nice look for a motherboard. So we're going to throw these in here for you. So we've got all these little gold lifters set up here. Not exactly the proper term. You take your motherboard and you lay it on top of these and you match up the slots. And it should kind of like sit on top of them. They have like a weird lift. So then you can look down at all your little screw slots and you can see into them and make sure they match up. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or yeah, nine on here. So then you take your screws that come with, your mounting screws, these are the are these are case screws? These are the ones in the same bag with the gold ones. Okay. See, I can't believe the motherboard gave you no screws. I, I feel like I have an abundance of screws downstairs and bags from previous there's other, there's, there's other bags with screws in them. Though. What other kind of screws do you have there? Here, hand me two. Okay, these are... I don't feel like the black ones are the ones. Are, those are real long. Uh, these are long screws. I'm not sure what those four are Four tiny ones. Oh, this is a... Is it on the bags? This is for mounting your hard drive. This is the, or Okay, we'll use these, that's fine. They're in the same bag with that. So we'll just lay them down in there, get an initial little screw down with our fingers. These look like they're all a bunch of different sizes. They could just be extra. Yeah, depending. they could depend on what you need. So just kind of lay them in there, Kyle. I'll start screwing them in as you lay them. Where's our yellow screw down right here? So yeah, you want to go do an initial screw down, get them kind of tight, and you want to do cross corner. You don't want to push one down. It all together to start, you want to take your time and do them equally so you don't put pressure down on one side, which can, if you tighten one too tight, you can put a lot of pressure on one corner and it could, you know, ruin a corner of your motherboard if you're really crazy about it. But yeah, just put them in, spin them in there until they get semi tight. That one screw drops. Yeah, screws are very annoying. This is why people want to use the magnetic screwdrivers, and this is a terrible idea. This motherboards are basically the game board to your putting your computer together here. This is where you start when you're building a computer online. You usually start with picking what size computer you want, a full, a mini, you know. We have a mid-size tower. That's Whoa. bad. I just broke Kyle's computer. Just kidding, but keep putting them in here, Kyle. I can't reach out on it. I'll be blocking you. Okay, go ahead. But uh, yeah, you start with your motherboard and you, you know, make sure that your RAM type, DDR2, DDR3, DDR4, whenever that comes out, your your a, uh, processor socket type, and your graphics card uh, socket type all match up to this. So you have different PCI types for uh, graphics cards, PCI Express 2.0, PCI Express 2.0 times 16. There's different ones, so you need to make sure they match up. You can you know you can always get help from Newegg. You can always get help from different websites. They'll chat with you, help you. I mean, it'll definitely save you money, but this is where you want to start. You know, you, and then you can decide, you know, where, you know, where you're going to go. Because this is basically, you have to choose AMD or Intel motherboards. I don't think there are motherboards that uh, possess the same socket type for both. I, I'm not sure. We usually go AMD because of the price. You know, we got this for 1000 If we got a similar AMD um, or Intel processor, it probably would have cost double or triple the money. So, well, I'm almost got these all mounted right down here. here. Okay, I got a few more. But the next thing that I like to do is mount uh, the, the CPU then the RAM. It's really your choice, but I like to go from there. So, get the, get the uh, processor while I screw these down. You just want to go back, back through, do a final little tightening, make sure that everything is screwed down. You don't want a loose spot. You know, we don't want nothing moving around. You want it tight, but you don't want it to be compressing your motherboard in any corners. I'm just really, I just really love this motherboard look. I, this color is so much better than. So next, we're gonna throw in our processor here. As you can see, most of these things are similar in uh, motherboards. They have these little uh, lift levers here where you lift to open the pins. I'm actually going to zoom in on the processor a little bit for you so you can see what we're doing here. Just 
just tow it like that. There's a little lever here that you lift up when you're going to place it in. Oh, this was in a case. Oh, it was in a case inside there. So that's a little better. You got a little sticker you can show off. It was in a case. This is where Al said he still, didn't like it. I still don't like it being a plastic because I've gotten some that have damaged before. And you can just send them back. But here you have your processor. Pretty simple. You flip it over. You want to check your pins, make sure none are bent. And on the, each, on the back of the processor, you're going to have a little arrow. There's a little arrow in the corner, a gold arrow. And that arrow is going to match up with the arrow on the motherboard. And you're going to lay it in to match that arrow. So take your time. Make sure you pick the right spot. You lay it in there. It shouldn't be forced. It should just slide right in. You push it down on each corner. Make sure it's in. Don't push too hard. You don't want to bend your pins. And then you push this down here. Okay. And then it's locked in basically. Now you're on there. And most CPUs come with a fan in there. But they're not always the best fans. But we just went with that for now. You can definitely upgrade a fan. And each fan is going to be pretty simple. It's an AMD fan. has a heat sink. And right here, this is going to be sticky. That's why it's covered. That makes it stick down, keeps it cooler, keeps it locked on there besides the latch. And you can, it comes off pretty, pretty easy, but you can upgrade. Like, there's definitely better fans out there. If you want to keep your processor cooler, you can get better heat seats fans. Do what you want here. And that reminds me of the topic I want to talk about. Uh, we, you know, there's water cooling systems or whatever you want to call it. We don't do that. That's, I think that's really hard to do. But basically, you just want to take your time. And put this on here, and this is your cord that you plug into the motherboard for the fan to run. Make sure that's hooked up because you don't want your processor to be running without a fan on it. You always want to double check that when you first boot up. How do you know which way the fan goes down? Honestly, I never know. I just put it on there and then try it. It does. I don't really think there's a. Do you have to take that plastic off first? Oh, well, that's probably why it's not going there. Yeah, this is sticky, a little bit sticky. It'll like heat on there and kind of like seam together. But uh, it's usually not too hard to get off. But yeah, I don't think the fan, I don't, I think it's like basically virtually the same thing. You just want to make sure this cord is long enough to reach your CPU fan, depending on what corner it is. So this is the CPU fan spot right here. So it probably will just go like this because it has to latch up. So yeah, you don't want it, it really, you can't really go like that. So you want to make sure it's like this. Oh, they can't, I don't know if they can really see it. Should I move it a little bit so that you can see the slot? Yeah, that's right there. Oh, it's over here. Yeah, yeah. go ahead and move it. Yeah, while you're. And I think CPU fans are probably the most annoying thing to get on. You gotta match up these little uh, little uh, hooks here and like get them on both at the same time, but get them on safely. And I think it's kind of really annoying in my opinion, but maybe I'm just retarded at it. Yeah, so you gotta wiggle it around, get both sides hooked on. I just have really bad problems with this. Probably the thing I hate the most. Because you got to slide it back and forth and get both to hook. Say, so once you get both hooked, you have your little level here, lever here for locking it. You want to make sure that it's engaged. So it is. Then you have your fan cord. You can put your fan, CPU fan. It'll be listed. It'll say CPU fan. You want to check your pins. Make sure it matches up. And slide it right on. So then you have... Your fan hooked up. You don't want this to be in your top fan, so you want to make sure that you kind of like bend it up a little bit. It won't. That top fan won't cut it, but you don't want it to be running in your top fan. So just make sure you bend that around. You don't have to hook it up right away. You can wait to do all your hookups later. But I like to hook up as we go. So next, we want to throw in our RAM, which I think is easy to put in. So let's get the RAM out here. And what you want to check, you have your different DDR slots. You have your one through four. You want to make sure that you're putting the RAM. In slots one and three are two and four. Default one and three is basically what I go with. Easiest thing to do. So we're gonna take apart our G skill RAM here. We I don't think we need to think this is just a snap thing because they don't sell these in stores like this. So they you just kind of like snap it open because no one's gonna steal it from a warehouse. Basically, you have your G skill. They give you a little nice sticker that I was expecting here. This is Rips Rip Jaw Z RAM. I mean RAM. There's so many. RAM companies and RAM parts, it's really hard to choose. I prefer getting G Skill or Corsair. Depends on what you like. If you, you know, I always suggest getting something that has a decent looking heat sink on it. Good, make sure you read the reviews on the heat sink itself. So here we have our two sticks of 8GB RAM. We're going to throw this in the computer. So you need to pull these little tabs back on all of them here just to get the good thing. And then you make sure 
each piece of RAM is going to have a little slot here, a little gap. You're going to make sure the gap matches up. So look for the bar inside these, these strips here. Um, you're going to make sure, usually they're top, top short, so the shorter is topper, uh, long, sh shorter in the bottom is longer for each one. So this will be the bottom, this will be the top. And you have your stickers on here, you don't want to remove those so you can remember what type of RAM you have for later. You know, this is DDR3-866, which is pretty good. So we're going to place this in slot 3. It doesn't really matter what slot you do in what order. And you, when you push down, push down lightly, but it will make the clips flip up on their own and lock it into place. And I do slots one and three. And you hear a little click noise. Now you just want to lock your two and four into place, and that should be locked in there very nicely. You can see it all is coming together pretty nice. Like the coloring looks great on here. Slide them right in there. Parts one, uh, slots one and three. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit here. Now, the next thing you want to do, probably get your graphs card set up. So we're gonna get a graphs card out and we're gonna undo these slots here, but we're gonna bring that to you in another part where you're gonna take a little break here, because I wanna get this uh, open, but I don't know how long it's gonna take, so look for part two, we're gonna put them all at the same time. So this has been the first step of what you need to do basically. I mean, it's not this exact order, but if you you know have any questions or you want help or you wanna know what kind of parts you wanna get, just talk to us. We're pretty knowledgeable. We can always learn more, but there's a lot of experts out there, and a lot of good websites, so uh, if you have any questions, just let us know.